Imagine life without movies. You can't. This is because of a man named Thomas Edison, a semi-deaf inventing genius who made thousands of inventions that we use every day. It was Edison's kinetoscope that sparked the frontier of the $2.5 trillion motion picture industry we know and love today. In 1876, Edison opened one of the first U.S. industrial labs in Menlo Park, New Jersey. The lab would later be called the Invention Factory, where they invented, built, and shipped the product all in the same place. Edison was one of the first inventors to apply the principles of mass production and large-scale teamwork. This was a new business frontier, and Edison's design was modeled by Henry Ford and other business industries. Edison was also an astute businessman and he formed the Edison Manufacturing Company in 1887 to produce and sell his inventions. One of these inventions was the phonograph cylinder, an early form of analog sound recording and reproduction. Entertainment from moving images was not a new idea by the late 1800s. Mechanisms like the glass lantern, phenatistoscope, and zoopractiscope projected glass slides or sequential film images that could be turned with levers which created a sense of movement. In 1888, Edison filed a caveat with the U.S. Patent Office, describing his idea for a device which would do for the eye what the phonograph does for the ear. The initial experiments for this invention were based on Edison's conception of the phonograph cylinder. Edison had a revelation on a trip to France in 1889 where he visited French scientist Etienne Jules Marais. Murray's chronophotograph captured 12 images or frames per second on a long, continuous piece of film. The images he shot with his chronophotographic film gun were later used to study animals and their movements. Motion picture technology is difficult. You have to have film that stops, gets the image, advances, stops, gets the next image, and it has to do that 20, 30 times a second. So you need film that can take the beating. You need film that's sensitive enough to do it. Edison worked with George Eastman to develop the film with the sprocket holes, figuring out how the machinery is going to advance the film, stop it, advance the film, stop it. And he developed a really terrific camera and that was his contribution. Edison worked closely with his assistants, William Dixon and William Heiss, to build a camera and a machine to view pictures. By 1890, they developed a machine that exposed a strip of film in a horizontal feed mechanism. Both the kinetograph, the camera, and the kinetoscope, the viewer, were patented in 1891. Edison and Dixon worked with the Eastman Kodak Company to develop the 18mm sprocketed celluloid film that would become a movie camera standard. The kinescope included a four-foot-high cabinet with a peephole with magnifying lenses on the top. It was a device for viewing through a magnifying lens a sequence of pictures on a 50-foot band of film moved continuously over a light source and a rapidly rotating shutter that created an illusion of motion. The first public demonstration of the kinescope was held at the Brooklyn Institute of Art and Science on May 9, 1893. It was met with wonder and excitement. Edison's films were short, usually one to five minutes long, showing famous people, news events, and other leisure activities. The kinetoscopes were marked commercially through the Raff and Gammon firm at $115 a piece. The kinetoscopes were installed in penny arcades, amusement parks, and hotel lobbies. For 25 cents, you could watch five short films. A constant flow of new film subjects was needed to keep the invention popular so a motion picture production studio was built at West Orange in December 1893. This studio was called the Black Mariah. It was made out of tar and could rotate 360 degrees to get the most out of the sun. It also had a retractable roof to allow for light. These early films were directed by William Dixon. Edison's team registered the first film for copyright, a six-second short film of a man sneezing. Because Edison did not file for international patents, once the syndicate of McGuire and Bacchus acquired the foreign rights to the kinetoscope, Europeans modified and improved the movie machines. One such modified machine was the cinematograph, which was created by the Lemire brothers in 1895. The cinematograph was a camera, a film printer, and a projector all in one, 
the cinematograph was the first to project moving images which could be viewed by a paying audience, giving us the term cinema. Since the cinematograph did not run on a heavy battery like Edison's kinetoscope, it was much more mobile and could shoot scenes anywhere. The Lumiere brothers commercialized their camera and started film agencies in many countries. Raff and Gammon persuaded Edison to buy the rights to a projector developed by Thomas Armat in Washington, D.C. in 1896. Edison manufactured and marketed the machine as the Edison Vitascope. The Vitascope set the format for American film exhibitions for the next several years. Vaudeville houses would be given a projector, an operator, and a program of short films. As the motion picture industry boomed in New Jersey, Edison's studio produced over a thousand short films through the 1890s. America's first studio, Black Mariah, held all the patents for movie cameras and projectors. With his vast resources, Edison bought movie patents by the dozen and filed lawsuits for patent infringement against any who competed with him. In 1905, capitalizing on this new movie industry, businessmen set up theaters where these short films could be individually viewed for a nickel. Hence, the theaters became known as Nickelodeons. Litigation was time consuming, so instead of suing everyone trying to create movies, Edison joined the largest producers together in 1908 in the Motion Picture Patent Company, combining all the big names in film production. This powerful film trust controlled the American film industry, charging rent for films, cameras, projectors, and theaters. Some producers got around Edison's monopoly by importing films from Europe. Here, they were beginning to create feature films using Sergei Eisenstein's montage techniques, which included shooting scenes from different angles, cutting, piecing, and editing the film to portray longer stories. Renegade producers, taking advantage of the new railway, went west to get away from Edison's Film Trust monopoly. They began setting up movie studios in a small town outside of Los Angeles called Hollywood. Here, they were close enough to the border to hide their equipment if Edison's detectives came looking. These feature film industries produced the big names we know today, such as Paramount, Warner Brothers, and Fox, led by Carl Lemley of the Independent Moving Picture Company. These studios railed behind the Antitrust Act of 1914 and took on Edison's Film Trust. In 1915, in a patent lawsuit battle, the government ruled against the Film Trust as an illegal monopoly and broke it up. Hollywood was free to take over the filmmaking industry in the U.S. and internationally as the world plunged into World War I. Edison, who had always been more occupied with the technology of film rather than the film industry, joined the U.S. Naval Consulting Board during World War I. By 1924, the motion picture was the seventh biggest industry in the U.S. With over 15,000 employees, Hollywood would progress from feature silent films to movies with color and sound, like 1920's Jazz Singer and 1939's Wizard of Oz. By 1959, the golden age of Hollywood began to wane with the advent of televisions in American homes. This huge hit forced directors to take a different approach. Film producers started making the films in 3D. This medium gave the viewers an experience they couldn't duplicate at home, so the film industry began to rise again. Theaters like Imagine Egan have 15 projectors that run automatically. Once the director sets the schedule for the week, the attendant turns the machines on in the morning and off at night. One theater can make double the amount of money that the entire motion picture industry of the US and UK made in 1910. To think that it all began with Thomas Edison's Kinetoscope, a commercially successful film camera and viewer that sparked widespread interest in motion pictures. The people viewer led to the development of more advanced motion picture devices and the growth of motion pictures onto a large screen, which allowed for a shared viewing experience and the development of a modern movie theater industry. Where, Where will we go, go from here? here?